Natalina. It's now August and so we are knee deep into some beautiful vegetables um, as you will see in the little video from my garden. But today's recipe is a vegetable antipasto which we're using quite a few of those seasonal vegetables so I'm really excited about this recipe. I'd like to show you first how I prepared all of our vegetables so have a look. Okay we're gonna give you a little tutorial on how to get your vegetables ready. So I have here a washed and peeled carrot. So I'm going to get rid of that big piece just to show you. So if we cut this in half, flat side down, we want a nice little chop. The Bernardin recipe recommends uh, a rough chop, but I'm going to actually recommend something a little bit smaller because for a vegetable antipasto, I like it to fit on a cracker. So think of it that way. So all these vegetables, we are going to prepare them so that once they're cooked down, they're going to fit nicely on a cracker. Okay, so that is an example of our carrots. So there you go. Next, uh, green beans. So you could use string beans or you could use these lovely fresh Romano beans that I just picked from the garden. So we're going to top and tail them, get rid of those in compost, and then cut those into about a half inch piece. Okay, so about like that. So like I said, you could use do this with your uh, string green beans as well. So again, just keep in mind, we want it, once it's all cooked down, so it's going to shrink a little bit, we want it to be able to fit on a cracker. Okay, next, uh, let's pick up our cauliflower florets. So same thing, you want to remove any tough stems, and you just want to cut these down, keeping in mind that they will shrink it a little bit when they cook okay and then same thing we want it to cook down or cut sorry cook down so it's nice and small to fit on a cracker so there's our cauliflower okay and then next let's push this aside let's get our onion so if we take off the top and then flat side down safer when cutting and then cut it in half we'll remove the outer layers. We'll compost this and then flat side down. You can easily just do a few horizontal cuts. Okay, and then across to get a nice little fine dice. Okay, so that'll be for our onions. So of course you want to cut them all up and then measure them out according to your recipe. Next, peppers. Uh, I'm not a big fan of green peppers, so often I will substitute uh, yellow, orange, or red peppers in this case. I would cut it in half, remove the seeds, then cut strips. Then go across the strips again to have a nice little dice that will fit nicely on a cracker. There we go. So we would do our required onions. In this case, two cups of one type and two cups of another four in total. Then we have our eggplant and our zucchini. So we would remove the top of the zucchini, then using our peeler or a paring knife, we will peel, peel this. The skin on eggplant can sometimes be a little bit bitter, so we will either remove it or if we're leaving it, we will often salt it to remove the bitterness. So the bitter liquid will be drawn out with the salt. So in this case, we are going to peel it, okay? So just using your peeler, get rid of all this beautiful skin. I love the color of eggplant. Beautiful deep purple. This is so fresh, just picked out of the garden. Let's get rid of the ends, compost our peel, and now flat side down. We'll cut a few slices, and you can see there's hardly any seeds at all whatsoever. Stack a few of these. So 
some strips. Flip them around and again, a nice dice that will fit on a cracker. Oftentimes when you're chopping vegetables or anything really that matter, think about how it's gonna be served. Is the guest gonna use a spoon to scoop it up or are they gonna, in this case, put it on a cracker? So that'll help guide you. Okay, so there we go, we've got our eggplant. Next, our beautiful green zucchini or Italian zucchini. So we're gonna remove the top and bottom. We are gonna leave the skin on for these because they are nice and tender. So flat side down, same idea as the eggplant, some nice thick slices. Okay, I'm watching you don't cut yourself. You can see there's just a few little seeds in there. I'm gonna get one more slice out of that. Same idea, skin and all, because it's nice and tender. Some of the strips, then flip around beautiful cubes of fresh zucchini. It doesn't get any fresher than that, just picked today from the garden. This is gonna be a delicious canning project that I'm sure you will love. Okay, so there we go. And last but not least, we've got our basil. Now I've got some watermarks on these. Um, that's just because, uh, probably because of the rain we just had on the weekend. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna chiffon on this. So you'll see I stacked up the leaves. We're gonna roll them up. Okay, and then get in there with a sharp knife and we're gonna cut them into little ribbons. Okay, so continue getting all of your vegetables prepared and then we will get this cooking into a beautiful antipasto. Okay, so we've got all of our vegetables. I've kept the carrots separate because those are one of our harder vegetables. Those will go in first. All the other vegetables are mixed together in this bowl. Then we've got our fresh basil, nice handful that's been chiffonaded. If you're using dry basil, you don't have to go with the whole three tablespoons because that's a lot of dry basil. I'll allow you to judge that by taste, okay? Same with the oregano. I do have dried oregano here. You can use as much uh, as two tablespoons of dried. I've got about two teaspoons here. So I'll let you again uh, season that to taste with these flavors. Now, dried oregano is one of the only dried herbs I do like to use. Although we do grow fresh oregano, I prefer fresh oregano for uh, marinades and dressings and maybe Greek inspired dishes. With my Italian dishes, I do prefer dried oregano. I just love the flavor and I'm, I'm not alone there. Most Italians do prefer dried oregano. Okay, we've got our two cups of packed brown sugar. We've got our two cups of red wine vinegar. Uh, we have our three tablespoons of pickling salt, our four garlic cloves minced up nicely. We have our two tablespoons of hot sauce. This is Tabasco sauce. And again, you're gonna add that to your taste. You can el eliminate it entirely, add more if you wish, but there is two tablespoons measured out and I'm gonna go to taste. Again, our vegetables, although we've measured everything out, depending on the water content, that can affect our final results. So I prefer to season um, herbs, hot sauce to taste. That's not gonna affect the pH balance or the high acid, um, in this uh, particular recipe, so it won't affect our canning method, okay, which is the high acid water, uh, water bath canning. Okay, um, and last but not least, I have our tomato paste. Now the recipe calls for three cans, each 156 milliliters. I prefer the triple concentrated imported from Italy. It's just got a lot of really great flavor. Each of these tubes is a little less than a tin. It's 147 milliliters. So I've got three um, tubes plus about another third here that'll make up for that difference, okay? So that is entirely uh, your choice. Um, anyone that's taken classes with me knows that I love this product. So we've got everything in its place. I've got my water just coming up to a boil here where I'm going to sanitize my seven uh, 500 ml jars. Now I happen to have wide mouth, but of course you can use regular mouth as well. So tell you what, this water's boiling, let's pop those in there and then we'll commence our recipe. So this is a really nice recipe that you may have had um, homemade or you may have had a commercially prepared one. 
the commercial prepared ones, as I've indicated in the past, they sometimes have protein in them, and therefore those would be uh, processed not with the water bath method like this, but rather the pressure canner, okay? And that's because that is considered a low acid canning project as opposed to our high acid here. So this has been developed, this recipe, particularly from Bernardin, it's been developed uh, so it can be processed in this manner. So it's a little bit safer. I'm just having a problem getting water in this last one so it'll stay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's process those with our lid on for a few minutes. Okay, so I've got our heavy bottom pot. We're going to turn that on. Um, I like to start on high heat with most things and then adjust as we go. So I'm going to start on high heat and I'm going to combine our sugar, salt, vinegar, tomato paste, and hot pepper sauces and garlic. Okay, so sugar in, salt, vinegar, so there's our liquid, and that's a nice wine vinegar, tomato paste, and hot pepper sauce and garlic. So, as I've indicated, I, I do want some hot sauce in there, so I'm going to add half of that to start. And then once we get all our vegetables cooked down, I'll taste it, and I'll only add more if I choose to. We'll see the water content once everything starts to cook down, whether or not um, we need that or not. Okay, and then last thing is our... Okay, so we're gonna just pop those right in. And these, you can just do that. Okay. give this a mix. So we're going to bring this to a boil or medium high heat. So like I said, I usually start on high and then I bring it down. Okay, you can see that there's some steam coming off. And actually our jars are ready. So I'm going to turn those off and we'll get to those in a moment. Oh, this smells so good. Okay, so once this comes up to a boil, over a medium high heat, we are going to add our carrots to start. And that's why we kept them separate from the other vegetables. So our carrots are our hardest vegetable. They're gonna need a little bit longer to cook. Overall, we're not cooking this for a long time in the pot. And that's just simply because this, this recipe gets processed for a full 25 minutes in the water bath. So it's gonna to continue to cook um, while the uh, mixture is in the jars and being processed, okay? Okay, we're just coming up to a boil. So we are going to add our prepared carrots. And like I said, we're gonna let those cook for about two minutes just to give them a little head start because they're our hardest vegetable today. Okay, so we've let this go for about two minutes. Now we're gonna add the rest of our vegetables in there. And we're gonna let them go for about five minutes. Let's try and get those in here. All the beautiful colors. They're kind of layered in there so now you can see everything. Okay, let's give that a stir. And then we're also going to add our handful of chopped basil. And like I said, for myself, I'm going to start with two teaspoons of oregano, and then I'll only add more if I feel it's necessary according to my taste. Okay, so this is going to be quite thick. It is going to cook down a bit in the five minutes. Okay. Not much though, because it's gonna do most of its cooking in the jar um, when we're processing it in the water bath. So in we go with our beautiful basil. In we go with our two teaspoons of oregano. And then let's give it a stir. And even though it's not all gonna be cooked down, you should be able to get a pretty good idea of the flavor profile just from the sauce surrounding all the vegetables. So you can check and adjust the hot sauce and any of the basil or oregano if you choose. 
Okay, while we're cooking this down, I'm gonna remove our jars because they are ready now. So I'm gonna use the tongs to carefully remove those. So we've got our seven jars. Let's see how many we end up with today. Most of these recipes, especially that the canning companies do, are centered around how many it will fit in a canner. So often, um, if we are using 500, 500 milliliter jars, usually they'll design the recipes around seven, which is what will fit in your canning um, pot with the rack. So there we go. Okay, and then let's keep that hot for when it's time to process them. Okay, let's come up to a simmer. We're just gonna give it a stir every once in a while. Okay, once everything's in the pot, we're gonna bring it to a boil over medium-high heat again. So it's gonna take a few minutes after we've added all those vegetables. Then from the boil, we're gonna time it. It's gonna boil on medium-high heat for about five minutes and that'll cook everything down. I'm gonna get in there with a spoon and see what I think of the seasoning so far. Oh, it's nice. It's got just a little tiny kick to it with the hot sauce. So, you know what? I think I'm going to leave it at, um, what did I put in? It was two tablespoons. I put in about one and a half tablespoons. I'm going to keep it right there for my taste. The oregano seems to be fine. The basil's great. So I think it's good. Okay, we're just starting to come up to a boil. So once it's up to a rapid boil, we'll start timing the five minutes. Okay, here we are. We're coming up to boil, so we're going to set our timer now. We'll give it a stir every once in a while because we don't want it to scorch. And adjust the heat if necessary, if it's boiling too hard. Okay, we're down to our last minute. We're just going to stir it because it will have thickened up a little bit. We don't want it to scorch. It smells amazing. So it's only cooked down a little bit because it's only been for five minutes. So the vegetables are still quite firm. But remember, 25 minutes in the water bath is going to continue to cook those vegetables. So let's go in. We'll just check the seasoning one last time because it will have uh, reduced a little bit. Mm, so delicious. So it's kind of, if you've ever had it on Tabasco before, it's kind of a sweet... Um, it is kind of a sweet stewed vegetables. And that's, you know, the sugar and the vinegar. Um, but it's a lovely flavor combination. And like I said, when it's all ready, you could easily add some chopped um, olives. Or if you want to do uh, some tuna, you could get some good quality chunk tuna. If you get Italian tuna, it'll be uh, preserved in olive oil, which is even better. And um, you can easily just add some after you open a jar, after we've done the water bath and it's all been preserved. Okay, so that is ready to be turned off. And I think uh, for my flavor profile, I think the flavor is fine. I'm not gonna add any more oregano um, or hot sauce. Okay, so let's get rid of our wooden spoon and let's get ready to fill these. So while I'm bringing over my jars to get ready to fill them, I'm gonna turn on my snap lids same as usual. I've got my wide mouth snap lids in there all ready to go. Oh, and there's my timer. So let's get that timer off. Okay, so we've got our funnel and our ladle. We've got that turned off, but it is of course going to continue to boil a little bit. So be very careful when you ladle this in because it is very hot. This one we're going to leave a little bit more uh, headspace. We're going to leave a half an inch on this. Okay, so as usual, we're going to fill them up as best as we can and then we'll adjust them and remove any air bubbles and go from there. So let's see what we've got. Okay, I have to admit, when you chop them down into a nice little dice, it looks so beautiful, too. I think I don't think you could see that. It looks lovely when it's all ch chopped quite uniform in size. Of course, we eat with our eyes first, so there's no shame in trying to make it look pretty as well. And all the colors with the um, peppers, I love as well. We've got green, orange, yellow, red in there. It's just beautiful. Okay, and I 
we just might actually be true to yield today. Wouldn't that be nice? So, so far we got four. And I've got quite a bit here still. Now I am only going to be able to fit seven in my can canner, so if I end up with more, I'll have to keep it in the fridge. Okay, I think it's time to get rid of the funnel and use a spoon for our last bit. So we're topping these off and it looks like we're going to get our seven jars. Isn't that lovely? And our snap lids are ready. They're boiling, so let's turn those off. Okay. Next, we will get our little tool in there to check for any air bubbles. So again, I'm pulling it away from the jar towards the center, so to release any air bubbles. Okay, so let's check our head space. And it looks like, yeah, we're about a half an inch, which is exactly what we want. So let's remove air bubbles from all of these, then we'll give them a nice wipe so there's nothing on the rim to hamper our seal. This one's not super thick. It's kind of more like a vegetable stew. There's not a lot of place for air bubbles to get trapped, but we just want to make sure if there are any, we get them out. I find the, the thicker liquids seem to capture the air bubbles a little bit more. Okay, and now we're going to take our clean cloth, give these a little wipe. And last but not least. Our wide mouth lids. You could very easily use your regular mouth lids for this. I don't recommend one or the other. I actually had to buy more 500 milliliter jars because I was all out and this was all the grocery store had. And, whoops, in 500s. So this is what I came away with. Typically the wide mouth are a little bit more expensive. So, oh dear. So if I had a choice, I probably would have taken the regular, but this was all they had, so I took them. There we go. So now we will add our rings, and these are nice new ones. And remember, just fingertip tight. They're quite hot, because the liquid is boiling. There we go. And then we will carefully, because they're very hot, put them into our canner. And from the boil, we will process these for a full 25 minutes. So this is one of the longer ones that we've done. And we've got a lot of vegetables in here. Um, a lot of low acid vegetables and we've increased the acidity with the added vinegar. So we want these to go for a full 25 minutes. It'll continue to cook the vegetables as well. So these are now fingertip tight. Let me get rid of our pot. Now our vegetables are quite hot. Our pot is hot. Our jars are hot. So it should not take long at all for these to come to a boil. So Let's get them in there. We might have to top up the water a little bit. Some of it may have evaporated. So I will turn this on to get it started. I hope this video inspires you to try this recipe. This is really August in a jar because um, now we're getting into a lot of beautiful August produce and going forward we're going to be doing more eggplant, more tomatoes, uh, maybe some peppers. So those are kind of my favorite. Uh, those are my favorite preserves so I'm really excited um, for our August recipes. So in we go our last one. Oh and it is covered so I don't have to cover it so it's covered by at least an inch so we're good to go. This will not take time to come up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, we're going to let it go for a full 25 minutes. Then using my lifter, I'm going to remove the jars onto our tea towel, just like always, and let them sit for a full 24 hours um, upright so that they will nicely seal and preserve all this wonderful work we did today. Anyways, we will be tuning in for our Q&A this Saturday as usual at 10 a.m. So please bring your questions and we'll see you next time. Thank you.